Hi everyone, how you doing? You good? Good. So, I'm gonna talk about the Holy Bible. I think that it's fake. Not necessarily fake as in it's some bullshit, but fake as in holy. Think about the word holy. When you think of holy, especially the way that they have it spelled, you think of holes, right? Or at least I do. So I'm gonna just talk about me. I think about holes and I know that when reading the Bible, there are a lot of holes in it. You know why? Because they took out a lot of information. Not only did they take out a lot of information, I don't know if you know, maybe you should do some research. The Bible has been rewritten over 24,000 times since the first printing of it. To me, that's sketchy as fuck. Why? Because if this thing is so worth reading and so worth everyone just knowing the truth, why was it rewritten so many different times? Not only that, it has been translated into seven, matter of fact, over 700 languages. So let's think about this. Not only has it been rewritten over 24,000 times, it has been translated in over 700 languages. There are a lot of words that don't have words for different languages so you can't even translate those words which means a lot of the times you just gotta ignore it because you're like i don't know what that means whatever jack off go on to the next thing and that's kind of fucked up don't you think because you have all of these people believing in this one thing but really they're not even getting the full truth because not only was it rewritten like i said things have been taken out books have been taken out i know a lot of people maybe you know about it now but don't even know about the book of enoch and that's like a very very important book like Enoch has some great information and I suggest that all of you listen to it if you don't on YouTube um, it's three different parts but I think that it's worth your time if you actually care about the Bible enough to look into it and read it um, also the book of Apocrypha Apocrypha I'm gonna put it in the description because honestly I can't remember what it is right now but it goes into more detail about Jesus and everything like just those two books alone have so much information that people should know to actually help them deeper and further into their understanding of not only the world but Jesus and God and whatever else it is that religion is trying to push on to people but for whatever reason they chose to keep the books that they chose to keep and not only that i personally just from being an american it is what it is we only know english for the most part so being that i only know english i can't even go to a different country and read a bible and be like you know this is the same exact thing that this bible says because that's not true even the bibles here in america some of the words i was at my great grandfather's house and I was looking for a Bible. I was trying to prove something to my uncle. And I know that it was in my Bible. However, I didn't have my Bible at the time. So I went to my great grandfather's Bible. S supposedly the same version, King James. However, Genesis was missing like a whole 30 verses that my Bible had that his didn't have. And I'm just like, how can I prove a point when this isn't even consistent in the supposed same version? So for me, big turn off. Not only that, like I said, holy. It's holy because not only is nothing lining up, you can't really get a consistent thing if it's been translated so many times. Like, I don't care. Argue with me if you want to. It doesn't matter. Because even if you were to translate, the cat is green. Like, at some point along the line, someone's language is going to be like, I don't even know what a cat is. What is a cat? I don't even know what green is. What is green? And then you get this whole confusion. Then you get assumptions. Assumptions Assumptions ain't good for nobody. Because guess what? Assume you make an ass out of you and me. Don't do that. Anyway, back to the Holy Bible. It's bullshit. It's not bullshit because it has truths in it and nothing new under the sun. However, as far as a religion, as far as Christianity and all of that, I don't think that you should follow it and I know there are a lot of people who are like super strong gung-ho the Bible is everything but I think you should actually do some research and I think you should actually dig deeper into what you are putting your life on the line for because what you believe is real I'm not gonna take it away from you however think about it actually on a deeper level like actually focus on 
everything you read in the Bible. If you're a religious person, if you actually like stick to the Bible, read everything. And I know some people are like, you can't take everything literally. Of course not. That is very true. But just read things and try to put them into different perspectives. Look at them from a religious perspective, okay? Look at it from a, this is just a story perspective. Then look at it from an astrological perspective. Then look at it as a fairy tale. Just look at it in different lenses. Don't just look at it in a religious mindset and think that's the end all be all because everyone has their own interpretations, anything of everything because everything is subjective depending on the person. So because the basis is it's holy, holy, H-O-L-Y. They could even used whole as in W-H-O-L-E, but no, they chose whole, H-O-L-E, the basis for that, which means there's something missing. So, holy, it is a lot of things missing. The Holy Ghost is, I don't even know, I don't even know, because I don't even know how they decided to name the Bible, the Holy Bible. Maybe they was trying to give y'all a hint, like, hey, it's not all factual, it's not all there, but read at your own risk, basically. But that's just my perspective. That's just what I've been thinking, and I've been trying to get into Jesus. I've been trying to get some understanding and some comprehension. I ain't get it yet, and I don't think that I'm going to, and that's okay with me, because at the end of the day, this is my life, this is my journey, this is my path. So let me know what you guys think. Wait. Let me know what your points are. Let me ask you a question. Yes. In reference to Jesus, because I think I think I think that I'm with you on this whole holy Bible thing. I'm with you on this holy Bible thing, and that it is, from my perspective, the most controversial book ever written, um, or books, because it has been it's gone through so many different people. But I have a question about. Well, I think that in reference to Jesus in the Bible, I think that. Or would you say that it could be an individual that was placed in there to see everything is like mental. I think that Jesus was placed in the Bible and I think that Jesus is real. I believe that there has been many Christ figures, many individuals who have lived in the world and who have died spreading the truth about life would you say that that's true or not what you would you what do you think about that i guess what i think about that is that i completely understand where you're coming from and yes there are a lot of people who are on truth who die for the truth who are martyrs of their people however what i'm talking about what i'm referring to with jesus is the bible or maybe just Christianity and I'm making it a whole other thing because I know that there are many more different religions. However, as far as just Christianity, they talk about Jesus and how Jesus is, you got to go through Jesus to get to God. Well, to me. See, that's, that's, I, uh, I don't agree with that because I, the commandments, God's commandments says put no other God before me. So, you know, it was from God, not from Jesus, right? So then if you are worshiping Jesus over God, then literally you are breaking one of the first commandments, like the first three or four commandments already. Well, yes, that is true. Not only that, Jesus and Satan are both mentioned as the morning star. That's true. So That's to saying. me, why? Why am I even wasting my time with this nigga? Like, cool, if he was on truth and everything. However, for me to have to go through you, to get to somebody else is preposterous to me that's just like me trying to do business with you but i continuously talk to the freaking trash can over there because jesus took all the sins right so he done took all the trash I'm talking to the trash can hey trash can i would appreciate if you got me to the one who collects all the garbage that's all i want from you why when i can just talk to you be like hey garbage collector how you doing yeah, yeah i appreciate you and everything that you do but here is the trash that i want you to collect let me know if this is something that you even want to deal with versus me going through the trash can and being like hopefully the garbage collector picks it up i don't know yeah. we'll see that's that's stupid to me I, 
this is the part about Jesus where I think that there is a lot of deception and there was a lot of manipulation added into the Bible. But I think that the main thing about Jesus is, from my perspective, just, just stand up for the truth and know that it's going to get you killed. Or, you know, know that it could cost you your life, but it's the righteous thing to do to expose the system and the controllers and the ones, you know, the ones who are wrongfully using their power and, and abusing their power. Long story short. Religion is a slave and Jesus is the overseer. Jesus is in Satan? All that. Overseer. Seeing everything. Jesus was whipped though. Yeah. This I know. This is what they have told. I haven't seen Passion of the Christ, but I heard about it. I should probably watch it. But I'm going I'm to watch that today, matter of fact. But anyway. Yeah. Jesus was whooped, right? But at this, think about it like this, because even they didn't change Jesus so much with not even just his name, just well, he ain't even a white man. Joshua. So, in the Old Testament, are you saying Joshua? Joshua. Joshua. Okay. In the Old Testament, Joshua was the prototype for Jesus, miracle birth. Uh, he didn't have 12 disciples, but he had 12, uh, 12 siblings. Are you talking about Joshua or Joseph? Yeah, uh, Joseph. Joseph. One of them, one of them in the Old Testament. Okay. Miracle birth, 12 siblings, sold by uh, uh, his brother out of the 12. He was sold, uh, you know, sold, betrayed by his sibling. Uh, I don't know if it was Judah or something. You know, it's just. Judas. Judas. Like a direct parallel to Jesus, you know. It just took the Old Testament, rewrote it a certain way. Changed the characters a little bit, changed the storylines a little bit, but kept the same thing. You know, I think, I think it was a different age, but they were telling the same story in a different way. Absolutely. Like, for me, just thinking about it, just in general, I do appreciate you bringing up Joseph. Um, there have been so many different chosen people that God had their backs, and he never say, Everybody go through these people. So to me, reference being Joseph, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, uh, Abraham, freaking Noah, probably Moses, like all these people, like all of them. Why was Jesus the one? one yeah. yeah. And then I, I, I agree with you that I don't like the major thing of people relying on Jesus to save us. I think that that was a part of the manipulation put into the Bible to keep us from coming together, first of all. Instead of us coming together and working on our problems together and actually doing something about the circumstances that are placed onto us and the oppression and the, the systematic racism and everything, we, first of all, individually depend on our Savior, Jesus. Which, like I said, I believe that there were many people who, I believe that the Jesus character is true and that there was many people who died on the cross, hung, you know, uh, tormented, brutal deaths to spread the truth and spread the gospel. But I don't think that that person is coming back. I think that's a part of the manipulation, but I, I don't like that it's majorly influencing our culture, in our society, in the black people, really, because I don't know too many heavy white Christians, besides, I guess, Catholic people, but I don't know if they really believe in Jesus like that. Anyway, I'm getting off the topic. I don't like that we believe that Jesus is coming back to save us. I don't, well, like, when has Jesus ever came back? Besides, apparently, after he died, and he's like, came back to take his body, apparently, <laughs> allegedly. So I agree with you. Jesus is very iffy. Jesus is a character that's very iffy in this religion thing. And uh, it is a, it is, 
probably, potentially, the most major setback or holdback that we have from stepping up and handling our own ish. And, you know, also it was turning the other cheek and stuff like that. Now, I, I live good-hearted to the best of my ability, but if I know that I'm living righteous and I know that somebody that's not living as righteous or don't know my circumstances is trying to cause harm to me, or trying to control me and stuff like that. I'm not going for that and I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, I, that turn out the cheek stuff, that's dead for me. <laughs> you say that, but Christians are the most warring religious people since they started killing people for not believing in the Bible. Like they are the ones, worship, worship, whatever it is you want to call it. It's all the same thing. Yeah. Like, they are just ready to kill. And it is what it is. Like, if you believe in something, by all means. If you feel that strongly about it and you're ready to die for it, die for it. But I suggest that you actually take the time to focus on what it is that you are actually putting your life on the line for. Ooh, I think it depends on the Christian. I think back in the old days, I can't really speak on history like that, but I think back in the old days, yeah, if you weren't a believer, off of his head. I think nowadays it, it particularly depends on the Christian. I think there are a lot of mature Christians who are into Christianity and if you are a non-believer then they will pray for you that you receive revelation and answers from source and the Holy Spirit. But I think there are a lot of other Christians who are not as mature in their heart and in their mind who if you are a non-believer and you live in the righteous they pray on you. But they pray for your downfall. They're like, oh, fuck them up God. You know, like, oh, this person doing this and they doing this and, you know, teach them a lesson, God. They they want bad things to happen to individuals instead of praying for them to just get the answers that they need. That makes sense to me. Um, I was not expecting this to actually be an open conversation, you guys, so this is good. Is there anything you want to debate me about? Anything that I said? Because that's well, more what so what I was thinking about. about. Okay. okay, then what? I was thinking I was going to be debating some people. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. It's just, for me, Jesus is the biggest, like, why are you following this person that, for one, even, I can't say what everyone else's Bible says. However, the Bible that I have, which I should have brought in, I didn't, it says... First of all, in Genesis itself, it says that thousands of years before the Bible was written, the pyramids were already up. So, God help those souls, I guess. Who knows? But um, it says that it was translated from Hebrew, which is Jewish. And then in the New Testament, it says that it was translated from Greek. So, being that the Greeks are what started the uh, Christianity, because Romans started Catholicism, so, you know what? It's just all to start an argument and distract us from what's really real, which is we are gods and we need to focus on ourselves and uplift ourselves and be on love and truth. Well, that's what the Bible says. Ye are gods. That's straight from Jesus. Yeah, Jesus said it. Jesus was they just spoken the that. truth. But yeah. you know, I gotta stand up. I hurt my okay. Butt. So I think I think where the I'll take this. I think where a lot of misconception about Jesus comes in is in reading the Bible and people. You know, you got you had David and you had Peter and John and all these other individuals. I don't know. I don't really know too. I, don't quote me on the Bible because I ain't like that knowledgeable. But you know, you have a lot of individuals who actually maybe lived in Jesus' times and they spoke about him. So a lot of people interpret who Jesus was or how he was or what he stood for and stuff like that based off of other people's outside perspective of him instead of what he said and what he did. And also, like you already said, like in elementary school when the teacher says, well, they lined up 10 students in a row and they tell the first child the sky is blue today and tell them to tell the next child and by the end of it, it's the rainbow has leprechauns at the end. And you're like, 
what the fuck? Like, that was not the original message, you know? So mm -hmm. it's been, perspective has changed so much of it. So not only is it a lot of individuals and Christians who talk about who Jesus was, what he did, based on other people's perspective, be it Peter, John, et cetera, their outside perspective, and they can't really say what he was doing things for because they're not him, you know, only him, only he could speak for himself. Also with the translation and the times and the different languages and all of that makes it lose its originality. Right. Yeah, you know, and the original message and the original intention. Hmm. I agree. It's the most controversial book ever written. And that's why it's holy. But, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I don't know, you know, you start doing research and you go to the Enuma Elish and stuff like that, an older doctrine, which talks about the creation story and what was going on. And it's, uh, it's the same and it's even more revealing, but it's different too, you know? And, and I think that was a Sumerian text, uh -huh. Enuma Elish, mm -hmm. and which is way older, I think, pretty sure than Christ era. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's just, I mean, but you know, you know, no. if you watch these videos, I'm sure you're a truth seeker and you know mm. it's bigger and it's deeper than just the Bible. But I know, mm. like you said, you want to debate some Christian folks, so go ahead and get to it, get it popping. I don't know. So, I mean, all I got to do is say something bad about Jesus and they're going to be on my head, so it don't matter. But, no, but, no. I just want to know. Did they come tell with the facts or did they tell you to just read the Bible they or go keep, to church? All they do is tell you to read the Bible and they keep, first of all. So then they don't know then. Because if they know, they could tell you where to go or what they would ask you questions and stuff like that. That was my problem with church as well. Like, I was had questions and then they couldn't tell me the answers. And so yes, I'm like, I yes, got to go search for truth I've myself. I've been here, I've been asking multiple people, how did Jesus come into play? Even in the new testament starting with matthew it just started talking about jesus and the mount on the sermon like they ain't even been like jesus came from mary and joseph and the angel came down and was like which is really just thoth and the rest of the uh those sahuti uh hermes whatever religion you want to come from it don't matter the story of jesus and how he came to be into mary was tahuti and a few other of the gods or deities of Egyptian times was like, you know what? The way that Egypt is going right now, they need some help. So we're gonna go ahead and make a good person for them to actually learn from so they can get back to the mindset that they need to be in. Not to worship this person, to help them to get back into the mindset that they need to be in. So. Tahuti was like, you know what, hey, is it cool with you, babe, if I go ahead and impregnate this uh, woman over here so we can have an actual, like, decent-minded person on earth? And she's like, yeah, it's cool, you know, I appreciate you helping mankind, if you will, man, humans, whatever you want to call it. So he like, all right, cool, boom, you pregnant now. Hey, you, I know it's a dream, but... I impregnated you, let your husband know, it's all good, I'ma let him know too. Hey, you, I impregnated her, cause y'all need this child, cause y'all need to fix Egypt. And they're like, all right, cool. Child came, just like Jesus. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Oh my gosh, this child is much different. Oh, truth, 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 let's kill this mofo. When really, the point of the matter is, change your mindset, focus on yourselves, focus on love, focus on actually growing. However, they just want Jesus to be the savior so you can dump all your ish onto him and then what you don't have to be accountable you don't have to think about anything you can just be like oh Jesus got it what about you ye without uh works has no faith or whatever it is what does it say faith without works is dead yeah faith without works is dead like even the bible says that what is you are you actually working on it or are you just dumping everything on Jesus and hoping that God hears your prayers through you dumping it on somebody else doesn't make any sense to me however I am genuine with wanting to know the answers because so far on my journey of this 27 years on this planet I have not gotten the answer of Jesus yet besides the Egyptian version so 
let me know what you got to say. Please just give me whatever information it is you have about Jesus. Besides, I'm going to hell and you're going to pray for my soul. Actually give me some information. That's all I've been asking for at least these past few videos. So, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you for jumping in the video. I appreciate you. And peace. Devil horns, whatever. Victory, I don't know.